Hi everyone, it's Katie and welcome back to day 10 of 31 Days of Tarot. Today our prompt is our top tarot decks to work with next year or this year. I think it was top five. I'm doing a top five. Um, now there's so many different ways to take this. Um, you know, there's tarot decks that are old favourites that perhaps I didn't use as much um, in 2017 that I want to work with more. Um, or just those decks that I had so much fun working with that I want to work with more. Um, but instead so that I don't just keep showing you the same decks. Um, I'm going to share with you kind of newer decks, kind of the ones that I got in the last three or four months that I haven't really gotten into just yet. So the first one I want to talk about is the Stretch Tarot. This one I got in a trade um, and I've said before, and I'll say it again, this is not normally the sort of deck that I would go for, but for some reason there was something about the Stretch in particular that really drew me in. And when I did get it, um, it really moved me, which I wasn't necessarily expecting. I was curious, but I wasn't expecting to have, you know, a strong kind of bodily reaction to it. Um, and I did a deck interview spread, um, and I found reading with it very smooth. And it's beautiful, it's very interesting. I love how many different layers there are. And I love too, I think what I like about this over other collage decks is there's actually quite a bit of depth to the imagery because it's a little bit mixed media. Um, it looks like these pictures were kind of put together and then photos were taken of them. So like with these matchsticks, um, there's quite a bit of depth to them, whereas sometimes collage can feel a little bit flat to me anyway. I love to the kind of intentional pops of color. Um, I think they're beautiful. And I love that the cups are teacups. It is really, really different um, from pretty much all the other decks that you know I kind of go to and that I really like. And really most other decks in my collection because I don't tend to be drawn to these darker cards and colors not because I don't like them because a lot of um, cards that are darker I find harder to see the different parts of the deck or the imagery but I think because there's quite a lot of layers and dimensions going on in this in these cards they're a little bit easier for me to see next up is the mesquite tarot the little cute mesquite tarot this one, I fell in love with the imagery, especially the court cards really got me um, when I first saw them online. Um, but then when it, oh, I love the backing too, isn't that cute? Um, but when it kind of finally showed up after I bought it, um, I don't know, it just, it, nothing clicked for me. Like a, a connection, a relationship with this deck didn't just fall into place like it does with a lot of other decks or like it did with the Sasserai Beto, which arrived at the same time I ordered this along with the Sasserai Beto. So because I had such a quick, amazing reaction to the Sasserai Beto, you know, I just, I didn't want to force anything with this deck and I was just enjoying myself so much with the Sasserai Beto, it wasn't really a priority. But I adore the court cards. Um, so I really, really do want to get into this deck next year and I'm super hopeful I'll be able to develop a good connection with it because I just, I really like the artwork. I love the guidebook. I love the whole premise of this deck being very neutral, um, in terms of sex, gender, race, all of those things. It's just very, very neutral. Um, and I really, really like that. I love that a lot of the miners are reasonably pippish. I love these sort of cards that are kind of semi-pictorial, semi-scenic. I also just really love these colours. There's just something about it that's very soothing. Love this Wheel of Fortune card. There's so much that I love about this deck, so I'm really hopeful that with a bit of time spent with this deck, we will be really good friends by the end of this year. The next three I haven't worked with at all yet. They all came in December. I went on a little bit of a, a shopping spree bought three mass-produced decks that I kind of often would see and then you know how you, a deck pops up and you're like oh I remember that deck and then you start watching all these reviews and flip throughs and then you're like yeah yeah I'll put that on my list but then you never get it that's kind of what I'd done over and over again with these three decks and so I decided just to get them with some of my birthday money two of them are by Los Scarabio um, and I actually really like the cardstock of Los Scarabio um, but I the thing that I struggle with with these two decks that I've picked is some of this artwork and the pictures I love. But then there's a few that I'm just like, no. Um, and I think that's what kind of always put me off before. Um, and I think Los Scarabia is pretty well known for the what Ethany called the porn star tits. <laughs> um, you know, that kind of really, sometimes it feels a little bit 
too much objectification of women, very much the male gaze um, sort of stuff going on with quite a few of their decks. Um, although these two that I've chosen, I think have less of that than some of the other ones that I've chosen. This deck in particular, the Wheel of the Year, I really like the colours. And one of the reasons I had put off getting this deck for so long largely was because of the way the seasons are associated. Um, you know, they're not the way that I see my seasons. But also, I mean, I think I've kind of, as time has gone on, I've been able to see the seasons and the way that um, the elements that are associated with the seasons, particularly in the Northern Hemisphere and more traditional um, Wiccan correspondences, I've kind of just come to see them more metaphorically. And some of these colours, aren't they just stunning? And each of these suits depicts a season of the year, which I think is really cool. So yeah, I'm not really sure how I'm going to go with this deck, but I just love the colours and a lot of the imagery I really like too. I think it's really, really pretty. The next one is probably my favourite of these three that I've recently got, but again, I love so many of the cards, but then there's just a few that I'm like, mm, no, not so much. It's the Secret Tarot um, by Marco Nazzoli. Um, I really like a lot of this imagery, and this has been a deck that I've looked at quite a bit on and off online. Don't really like the backing, that's the Two of Cups. I don't like it when cards, like it's just straight up a card that's on the front of the deck is put on the back. Um, just not my thing. But I really, really am drawn to a lot of this imagery. This is in order as well. There's just something about it that really kind of just grabs my imagination. Um, it's interesting though, because normally I um, respond quite well to kind of like people in cards and you know, the emotions that are on their faces and in their posture and things. Whereas the people in these cards are quite cold and blank in many ways, a lot of them. But there's just something about it that I'm really attracted to. Um, although, as I said, there's a couple of cards that just don't quite do it for me. So I've almost had this idea, I'm not sure if I'll do it, but this idea, because I also want the Low Scarabio Tarot, I think it is, it's just like the Low Scarabio Tarot. I kind of want to get those three decks, the, like these two and then that one, and trim them and put together my own, you know, ultimate Low Scarabio deck and choose for each of the cards which I like best out of the three decks. It's kind of what I want to do, um, but we'll see. I love this Queen of Swords, isn't she cool? It's a very pretty deck, um, and something has just drawn it, drawn me to it for so long. So I'm really glad I finally got it, so I can kind of really sit with it and experience it for myself, rather than always having to look at it through a camera. Now, finally, is a deck that I'm really not sure if I'll be able to work with, and not because it's not incredible and so beautiful, but just because I don't have great eyes and I struggle to see stuff. Um, it's the Shadowscapes and the only reason I bought it is because I'd heard everyone talking about the Czech edition. I'm assuming it's Czech because that's what I've heard everybody else say. Um, which has quite, like the cards are quite a bit larger. And it also comes in this really cool hard box. And I love that it has the, guide, has the whole guidebook but in like a small book that fits in the box. Um, I mean, obviously it's in Polish or Czech or whatever, so I can't read it. But I do find that with Lowell Index that they make these giant guidebooks with so much white space um, and they take up so much room on your shelf. I would really love if they could package their decks like this. Um, and the fact that they're so much larger makes it so much easier for someone like me to see. Um, and I mean, I can see them a lot better than I could on the old ones but some of the cards I still do struggle to pick out the details. Um, and I mean, I've heard people say that is true for them too, but they don't care because they love it so much, which I can appreciate. But for me, how I read is very much different parts of the image it jumps out to me. Um, and if I can't make those out, um, that really inhibits my ability to read the cards in many ways. But these are beautiful. Um, and so, I mean, some of them I can really see quite clearly. So I'm hopeful that, uh, I mean, it's really just one of those things that I'll have to play around with and read and see if I can. This is one that I find it really quite difficult to make out all the details. 
um, but I don't have great eyes. <laughs> um, but I do quite like that these are larger cards. But they're still not giant, like they don't feel like an oracle deck. Um, they're just that little bit bigger to actually make the images, which are so detailed, actually visible. Because the little Llewellyn cards that they have, they're just so small. And you can't have imagery like this on tiny little cards. It just doesn't make sense. I'm not putting too much pressure on myself because I know that, you know, I don't have great eyes. These are very detailed images. Like this card, I just really struggle to work out what's going on at all. Um, and same with this one. I think it's definitely like this when there's a lot going on in the background and the foreground. Like it all just kind of melds into one for me with my eyes, which is a bit of a shame. We'll see with this one. I'm hopeful, but I'm also not putting any expectations on me or the deck. So those are the five tarot decks that I really wanna make an effort to use next year um, that I haven't really gotten into just yet this year. Um, all of them I've kind of gotten in the last few months and just haven't really stepped into, especially those last three. They've only arrived in the last few weeks. So it should be interesting and I'm looking forward to it. Um, if you guys have any comments or questions, as always, leave those below and I'll see you again very soon. So much love, bye.